it was hard for someone like me, you know, being a Royal Marine with a, with a large ego to be able to deal with that. I'm like, I'm someone of the fittest dudes on the planet and I can't even walk around the shopping center mm. without being exhausted. It was hard. Was there any particular low point that you had? when oh, you lows. Was, was there anything in particular that you really thought, oh, I can't handle this, so I'm going to give up with this? And maybe not like, not not suicide, but you're just going to, you were just going to give up trying to yeah. walk or you were going to give up, you know, you was going to say, I'm going to just stay in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. Was there any point like that? So... Three weeks after I was injured and I'm in hospital with the tubes in, I get the, the cliche chat from the doctor telling me I've got zero chance of ever being able to walk again because that, of the things I've just said, said to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's too difficult, too painful, takes too much energy. And that made me suicidal. A week after that, I was allowed out of the hospital and my family were in a flat across the road and they put me in a wheelchair. Now, when you've got one arm, whatever arm it is you've got on the on the wheel of the chair, you've got one hand, one kind of ring to go forward and back and another ring to go left and right. So it's a bit wider than a regular wheelchair. Mm -hmm. So I got through the, it's a tower block of, that we were staying in. So I got through the communal entrance, got through the front door, but couldn't access any of the rooms in the flat because of this wide wheelchair. So I had to sit in the hallway and eat my dinner. I had to piss in milk bottles because I couldn't get in the toilet. And in the evening we found out I was allowed this is the first time I was allowed to stay out of a hospital environment so I was sleeping in the flat with with Becky my, my now wife and we figured out like if we someone lifted me out of the chair collapsed the chair put it through the door opened it up and then walked me through I could get through into a room and in hospital I had brushed my teeth and shaved in like a head you know a mirror that goes from your neck up never seen my body in a full length mirror to that point for those first couple of weeks I used to be six foot two at my, my heaviest and fittest, I was 16 stone. At this point, without prosthetics, I'm like three and a half foot tall. Because of the limb loss and the infections I was fighting, I was about eight stone 11. And I wheeled past that mirror and I had this jacket on and where my right arm should have been, the arm of the jacket was just flapping down. What was left of my legs was poking out the end of these shorts. And I looked in the mirror and I, I don't mind admitting this, I spent the entire night crying about it like I can't live like this I don't think anyone would blame you though my whole my whole identity was wrapped up in my physicality yeah. of being strong and fit and, and healthy and all this lot and that was gone I looked like a skeleton it was it was horrendous and I just spent the whole night with Becky in that uh, flat in that bedroom just crying telling her I, I didn't want to do it and I wanted to, to kill myself but I'm a big fan of having a good cry and a purge every once in a while and it and it helps and I got up the next day and I'm like right fuck this like give me the legs give me a target and let's just go and we went, I did like two more weeks I think in hospital then went to rehab but I was I was refocused and I had I had been visited by an amputee in hospital I had found a mentor online so I saw what was possible if I put the hard work and effort in I, I thought it was going to be a lot easier than it was mm. um, and it, it did push me to the point of wanting to quit at, at certain times and I remember when I was in rehab I was the, at that time I was the only triple amputee in there and I used to get really pissed off when I'd see a guy with a foot missing get up in the morning like clip his leg on and walk out and it took me an hour and a half to get dressed and I was a sweaty mess and my legs were twisted and I couldn't balance and I had a crutch with me and it would take me all morning just to go and have breakfast and I was like this isn't fair. Like these guys just get up in the morning, clip a leg on and they walk out and their life's no different. I used to get really, really pissed off about it. Yeah, but and it's really fucking bitter. I, yeah. I would probably be like a and, really bitter, but- like, And it used to make me want to quit. And I'll tell you what happened, right? A friend of mine was in rehab as well. And he was, I'm probably going to get the, the term wrong. I, I think a tetraplegic, right? So basically his arms- all he could do was just gently move his head like this. He couldn't control his arms or anything really from his, his neck down. He had been in Norway, he was a Marine as well. And he had dived in the snow to do a snow angel and it broke his back, right? And I was having this really shitty time in rehab where I was thinking of quitting all the time, feeling sorry for myself. And I remember having lunch with him. And I, I don't know where this thought came from, but my legs were just raw and throbbing from wearing prosthetics. And I remember talking to him and thinking, this guy has both his arms and both his legs, but they'll never work again, ever. I've got no legs and one arm, but I have prosthetics. 
And if I put the effort in, I will be able to walk again. And then I flipped it and thought, if I was him sat looking at me and I bitched out and quit because it was a little bit painful and it took a bit of effort and a bit more energy, I'd be so angry. I'd be like, you ungrateful prick. My legs are never going to work. You've got the chance and you've just given up. And I remember sitting there thinking, shit, you know, I can't just quit. I've got an opportunity and I'm very lucky to have this opportunity. I just need to get my head down and start working hard. And that's what I did. I, my perspective changed completely. And I was like, right, let's go. And then I just started, you know, busting it every day, getting up, had that goal set, had some support and, and mentors to help me if I had any questions and just, just hustled every day.